Sedgeford of People's Archaeology is the story of the Sedgeford Historical and Archaeological Research Project, which we call SHARP for short. And SHARP has been digging in this particular part of the Norfolk village of Sedgeford for the past 19 summers. Much of our research during that time has been around the middle to late Anglo-Saxon cemetery based over in the boneyard behind us. So the book looks back and explains to people what we have found, what we've discovered, what we still have to find. In many cases with archaeology, you always end up having more questions at the end of your excavations than you ever did at the start. Diggin Sedgeford is Sharp's book on the first 11 years of our research. And I think what's really good about this book is that it's done what I thought was impossible. It has uh, combined both academic research, which will be of interest to universities and archaeologists internationally and nationally, and it's made a book that people actually want to read. We mentioned at the beginning that one of the, the, the real main focus of the project over those 11 years has been the, Boney, the excavation of the Boneyard Cemetery, which we've now left behind. Certainly not completed, there's a lot more to be done, but our work on the excavations of the three, nearly 300 burials that we um, took out of that area, that still continues. It's not an academic tome, it has all the important research in it, but we've managed to write it in a way that is a good read and you can understand whether you have a passing interest in history or archaeology or whether indeed you're interested in this part of North Norfolk and most especially in Sedford itself. The field that we're in at the moment, chalk pit field, field of about 50 acres, it has archaeology all over it. I think what is fascinating is that this village in Sedgeford has a history that we can now trace right back to Neolithic times. To Where I'm standing now, in this post-glacial river valley that's filled in over thousands of years, there's another two metres beneath my feet, which will take us back to the point of the last ice age. We found a Neolithic crouch burial of what we think is a teenage boy, somebody about 19 or 20 years old. And this boy was buried in a crouched position, but he was buried with care and with love. We've certainly got a Roman farmstead, and we do pick up a lot of Roman scattered activity right the way through this, this field here. The Romans have come back in after the Boudican Revolt and really laid waste to this area. Then it comes back into use. We're starting to understand what is actually happening there, where this area of West Norfolk becomes almost like a bread basket, probably for the Roman army. One of the reasons that we were first interested in coming to this particular site at Sedgeford was that we knew that there had been a number of skeletons uncovered here. Um, and in fact, we have found it to be a site of an early Christian community, an early Saxon community from about 650 AD onwards. The book actually gives you both. It gives you the informed story of human settlement within um, Sedgeford itself, but it also actually takes these discrete areas such as human remains. The bones themselves, we don't have any wonderful finds with them because as they were Christian burials, they were buried in shrouds without any grave goods. But what is so fascinating is that it's shown us that the community that were then living here in Sedgeford uh, were well nourished. We know what a very good diet they had. They were actually quite tall. Again, we tend to think of people in the past as being smaller than ourselves, but it's pretty fair to say that the average height of the males that we've found in Sedgeford was about five foot 11 to six foot, and the women were nearly five foot seven as well. And they had very strong bones uh, because they were doing hard physical labor, and they lived to a fairly good age. One of the interesting elements of Sedgeford, and we, we, we talk about this specifically in the book, is Sedgeford actually hasn't stayed in one place. The mid-Anglo-Saxon settlement and the previous Iron Age settlement and the Roman settlement after that uh, were on the southern side of the river. And then sometime in the late Anglo-Saxon period, just before or round about the year 1000, it moved to the northern side of the River Heacham and we now have the settlement around the existing church. 
and we know that there was an earlier church on that site and also we know there are moated settlements there. How do we know about this actual movement? Well we actually look at the the pottery typologies. We've essentially on our excavations on this side of the village we get huge quantities of the middle to late Anglo-Saxon wares, Ipswich ware, Thetford ware, whereas the work on the opposite side of the village we've undertaken and this is a specific chapter on the village survey where we've been actually going around knocking on people's doors asking can we dig holes in your garden and many of them have actually said yes we get a completely different pottery typology. Digging Sedgeford of People's Archaeology is really sharp story so far. It's certainly an unfinished work but we really believe that what the story that you're going to be reading in this book is an informative one, it's an engaging one and it sort of not only tells the story of human settlement within the village, it also tells the story of one of the largest and longest running independent archaeological projects in the UK. And what we must remember uh, in the book and also in our excavations is what we're finding at Sedgeford isn't unique to this part of Norfolk. In fact, the whole of Norfolk, and especially the North Norfolk coast, is full of fascinating archaeology and history. And we're only just beginning to discover how important that is in the history of Britain and England as a whole.